Kathy Schmidt. I'm the broker owner of Schmidt Realty Group, and I'm here today with my friend and colleague, Sabrina Bright. Sabrina is the senior training manager at our brokerage and a busy realtor as well. And she and I just put together a few videos answering some common questions that we get from people who are curious about the real estate profession. So today we're going to talk about how do you find the right brokerage for you? And it's kind of a it's kind of an interesting topic because it certainly is not one size fits all out there. There's a lot of different models. So, Sabrina, I'll let you kick it off. Yeah, sure. Um, and, and Kathy, it's a, a question I'm asked constantly, right? Um, uh, particularly in my role as, as an educator, real estate educator, is you know how do I pick the brokerage, right? And uh, you know, at the I guess the simple answer is know thyself. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the lovely thing, at least in our city, is that there are so many different models. There's there's every end of the spectrum, um, all kinds of different things. And I think it depends on whether you want to be a lone wolf or whether you want community, you know, and do you want support and mentorship or do you want to do your own thing? Do you want to design your own business cards or do you want to step into a system that's already there? And of course, you know, the, the answers to that are going to be different for every individual. So really be introspective about it. I think one thing, though, that surprised me when I became a new agent is just um, personally speaking that um, how lonely this business can be, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, there's nothing like removing conditions on a real hard fought deal at nine o'clock at night, you know, on a Friday night. And, and you're like, yay, I got it done. And you look around and there's no one there to celebrate <laughs> with you. And for some people, they don't care, you know, right? For me, I found that a little lonely. And I have to say, I enjoyed being part of a group more, you know, more uh, collaborative type of group. But know yourself. If you're the type of person that just absolutely doesn't want that kind of support and stuff, then don't choose a brokerage model like that, right? And, and with that in mind, that means meeting with people and doing research, watching videos like this, ask to meet with a broker, ask to meet someone who's training, um, ask to meet someone who joined the brokerage maybe six months or a year, a year ago and get yep. that information. Take your time and make sure that you're getting a good sense of it. Because one thing you don't want to do is be changing brokerages a lot. Every time you do that, you lose time and you're, you look a little less credible maybe to the people who are just starting to think, oh, looks like, you know, he or she's getting kind of solid in this. So you want to think about that as well. The other thing to think about is, of course, you're always going to be looking at what your costs are. This is a business and you need to be looking at that. But just be careful you're comparing apples to apples. Just like, you know, if you're buying a condo, sometimes the heat's included, sometimes it's not. So again, it costs a lot to be in business. It costs a fair bit to be in real estate. So whether you're paying the cost or the brokerage is paying the cost or it's shared, those costs are going to have to get covered, photography and all those other things that have to be done in the advertising in your staff. So I would say don't start by looking at the cost uh, scenarios for the various brokerages. Start to look more at initially at philosophy and see where you feel that there's a natural affiliation and a comfort and a connection. And then from there, have the business conversation. That would be my advice for sure. Agreed. Uh, you know, are the values of the brokerage yeah. similar to your values? I think another important point too, Kathy, um, that um, is sometimes overlooked is I, I personally feel um, that it's important to have a broker um, that you feel supported by and that you feel you can come to with questions and concerns and frustrations and, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. and you know, really, because, you know, if, um, you know, if you're, if you're needing that help, it is important to have someone that you, you feel like you have a good yeah. connection with and that understands you and respects you and then that there's mutual respect. Right. So I would suggest, you know, having a broker that it is also available to you when you need that help, when you're in the weeds, when you've got a serious legal question, because that kind of thing does happen in our business. And we it are in daily. Business. It happens daily. I know you and I are both fielding questions regularly. So, yeah. well, hopefully that, you know, gave you a little bit to think about. Like I say, do your research, do your due diligence, watch more, you know, informational videos like this. Um, you know, feel free to contact myself or Sabrina if you have any other questions. We're always happy to chat real estate. Um, that's kind of our happy place. So feel free to reach out and check back on this channel because we're always adding content as well. So hopefully that gave you some helpful information to get you started on your journey. Have a great rest of your day and Sabrina, I'll catch up with you later. You Bye for now. <laughs>